You're running a scenario. The PCs have a fistful of leads telling them where they're supposed to go next. They might have so many clues that there are multiple places they could go next. But instead of doing that, they head off in a completely different direction. And there's nothing there. Maybe they've made a mistake. Maybe they've made a brilliant leap of deduction, which turns out to be, you know, not so brilliant after all. Maybe they have a good reason to look for more information in the local library, or the newspaper morgue, or the records of the local school district. But there's nothing to find there. It's a dead end. Dead ends like this can be quite problematic, because once they have the bit in their teeth, players can be relentless. Convinced that there must be something there, they will try every angle they can think of to find the thing that doesn't exist. I've actually seen any number of groups convince themselves that the fact they can't find anything is proof they must be on the right track. The best evidence of a conspiracy, after all, is that the conspiracy isn't letting you find any evidence. Not only can this self-inflicted quagmire chew up huge quantities of time at the table to little effect, but once the players have invested all of this mental effort into unraveling an illusory puzzle, their ultimate failure can be demoralizing to the entire session. The effort can also blot out the group's collective memory of all the other leads they had before the wild goose chase began, completely derailing the scenario. Fortunately, there are some simple techniques for quickly working past this challenge. First things first, is it really a dead end? Just because they're doing something you didn't explicitly prep for, that doesn't mean there's nothing there. In fact, the principle of permissive clue finding that we talked about in our video on RPG mysteries and the three clue rule means that you should actually assume that there is something to be found there. So start by checking yourself. Is it really a dead end? Or is it just a path you didn't know was there? Maybe the players thought of some aspect of the scenario that you didn't while you were prepping it, and that can be really exciting. And even if something is a wild goose chase, there can be interesting things to be found there, even if they don't immediately tie into the scenario the PCs are currently engaged with. This is why I'll tend to give my players a little more rope in exploring these, um, dead ends during campaigns than I will during one-shots. The consequences of doing something completely unexpected can develop in really interesting ways in the long-term play of the campaign, but don't really have time to go anywhere in a one-shot, and are therefore usually better pruned away. Also, if the scenario runs long because you had a really cool role-playing interaction with Old Ma Ferguson that everyone enjoyed, even though she has, you know, nothing to do with the current scenario, it's fine to hang out the to-be-continued shingle in a campaign and wrap up things in the next session, which is once again, of course, not an option in a one-shot. In any case, if it's not really a dead end, then you should obviously roll with it and see where it takes you. If you don't feel confident in your ability to improvise the unexpected curveball, that's okay. Call for a 10-minute break and spend the time, you know, throwing together some quick prep notes. Although you don't need to announce the reason for the break, it's, it's generally okay for the players to know that they've gone diving off the edge of your prep. Most players, in fact, love it. The fact you're rolling with it shows them that you creatively trust them, and they will return that trust. It also deepens the sense of the game world as a, as a real place, that the players are free to explore however they choose to. And that's exciting, too. Okay, but, but what if there really is a dead end? There's nothing interesting where the PCs are heading, and therefore nothing can be gained by playing through those events. Well, if there's nothing there, there's nothing there. At its root, this is a problem of pacing. In an RPG, pacing is almost entirely about identifying empty time, the place where there's nothing, and jumping past it to focus on the next meaningful choice. So when you see a dead end ahead, just drive past it. Frame hard into abstract time, quickly sum up the nothing that they find, and then move on. For example, you might say, you spend the afternoon asking around the docks for anyone who's seen Jessica, but you can't find anyone who saw her down here. Or, you roll up on Jefferson Siena, haul him down to the precinct, and grill him for four hours, but you come up dry. He doesn't know anything. Or, you drive over to Mayfair to see if the library has the book you're looking for, but their selection of occult books is pretty sparse. The most straightforward, all-purpose version of this is to simply tell the players, 
you're barking up the wrong tree. This isn't the solution, there's nothing to be found here, and the scenario is, in fact, in a different direction. But this direct approach is usually a bad idea. You know all that stuff I said about how much the players love knowing the game world exists beyond the boundaries of your prep and that they're truly free to do anything and go anywhere? Well, this is basically the opposite of that. Even if you don't strictly mean it that way, the players are going to interpret this as you can only go where you're allowed to go. The distinction between this isn't the right way, try something else, and you did it and didn't find anything, now what, might seem rather small. But in my experience, the difference in actual play is very large. One is a statement about the game world, and the other is a directive from the GM to the players. Uh, but I think it's also because the formulation of you did it still inherently values the player's contribution. I, I didn't tell you that you couldn't do the thing you wanted to do. I was open to trying it. You did it, and it just it didn't pan out. It's a fine line to walk, but I think it's an important one. And the key here, once again, is to quickly sum up the totality of their intended course of action, rapidly resolve it, and then prompt them for the next action. What do you do next? A good way to start this can be, what are you trying to do here? This pops the players out of action-by-action action declarations and prompts them to sum up the totality of their intention. You then take their statement, rephrase it as a description of them doing exactly that, and then move on. Okay, I'm going to drive over to Mayfair. What are you planning to do? I want to check out the library there, see if they have a copy of My Name is Dirk A. that hasn't been stolen yet. Okay. You drive over to the Mayfair library to see if they have a copy of the book, but their selection of occult books is pretty sparse. It doesn't look like they've ever had a copy for circulation. It's about 6 p.m. by the time you pull out. The sun's getting low. Now what? It's a little like judo. You just take what they give you and you redirect it straight back at them. Where appropriate, you can empower the player's intention by calling for an appropriate skill check. Uh, streetwise to ask questions around the docks, detective to interrogate Jefferson Siena, library use to scour the stacks at Mayfair Library. The check can't succeed, obviously, since you already know there's nothing to find here. Uh, Jessica wasn't at the docks, uh, Jefferson Siena isn't involved in this, Mayfair Library doesn't own the book. Calling for the check, however, is part and parcel of allowing the player to truly pursue the action they want to pursue and resolving it truthfully within the context of the game world, while also letting the player know that this is what you're doing. If the group is currently split up, you can also disguise the simple judo of this interaction by cutting away once they've declared their intention and then cutting back for the resolution. Bruce, you find Jefferson Siena smoking outside of his club. What are you planning to do here exactly? I want to haul him down to the precinct and grill him about the missing diamonds. Oh, great. Give me a detective check. Tammy, what are you doing? Okay, Bruce. You spent the afternoon grilling Jefferson Siena in interrogation room number one. What did you get on your detective check? Eighteen. Hmm. Okay. Well, unfortunately, you come up dry. He really doesn't know anything. What are you doing after you cut him loose? Notice that there's a difference between... Jefferson Siena didn't tell you anything, and you are absolutely certain that Jefferson Siena doesn't know anything. One is a negation, the other is in fact a piece of information. Even if the skill check can't give Bruce what he's looking for, because Jefferson Siena doesn't know it, that doesn't mean the skill check needs to be meaningless. There can still be a meaningful difference between success and failure. Sometimes, though, is not a whole scene that will be a dead end. For example, maybe Jefferson Siena wasn't involved in the heist, but he's heard word on the street that Joe O'Connell was the one fencing the diamonds. Whether that's a clue you planned, or an example of you rolling with the PC's lead and practicing a little permissive clue finding, the scene has paid off. The PC's have gotten an important clue. But then the PC's just keep asking questions. They're convinced Siena must know more than that, or they're just paranoid that they'll miss some essential clue if they don't squeeze blood from this stone. The scene has turned into a dead end. Now what? Well, first, you can give yourself permission to just do a sharp cut. If the scene is over, the scene is over. Frame up the next scene and move on. However, if the PCs are actively engaged with the scene and trying to accomplish something, even if it's impossible because, for example, Sienna doesn't actually know anything else, this can end up being very disruptive and feel very frustrating for the players. 
You can soften the blow using some of the techniques we've already discussed. For example, you might cut to a different PC during a lull in the interrogation and then cut back to the PCs who were doing the interrogation while framing them into a new scene. You can also just ask, what's your goal here? And when they say something like, I want to make sure we know everything Sienna has to tell us, you can judo straight off that to wrap up the scene. But, you know, we could also borrow a technique that Kenneth Height uses for investigative games. When the characters have gained all the information they're going to get from a scene, Height holds up a sign that says, Scene over, or done, or something like that. The statement cues the players to let them know that there's no reward to be gained by continuing to question the prisoner, or ransack the apartment, or whatever it is that they're doing. You could obviously just say that to them, but the sign is less intrusive to the natural flow of the scene, so if there's something they still want to accomplish of a non-investigative nature, the scene can continue without the game master unduly harshing the vibe. You can adapt this pretty easily to other types of scenes, too. You're basically signaling that the essential question the scene was framed around has, in fact, been answered, and you're inviting the players to collaborate with you to quickly bring the scene to a satisfactory conclusion and, you know, wrap things up. Then you can all drive out of the dead end together. You know, if you wouldn't mind joining me in the car for a moment, I'd like to take you for a quick drive. My analytics of recent videos tell me that 80% of you watching this are either already subscribed or will subscribe by the time you finish watching this video. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for your support. But it also means that for the channel to grow, we need to reach out to more new viewers. Do the like, comment, and subscribe thing if you haven't already. But if you want to support the channel today, take a moment to find your favorite Alexandrian video. Maybe it's this one. And share it around. Post it on social media. Send it to your friends. It'll make a big difference. Good gaming. This is Justin Alexander, and I'll see you at the table.